Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to get started. Today's webinar is on Husk Smarter Lunchrooms. And my name is Brittany Malley. I'm a dietitian and the quality assurance specialist at NDA. Uh, today's webinar will meet the professional standards learning topic codes of 3200 and 4160. And then uh, something, hold on one second. Hang on one second. Okay, we're good to go. Sorry, we thought we were having a sound issue. Okay, so to start with today, one thing I want to mention is I've attached a couple handouts to this webinar, and you can find those on your... The, the, the tab on the side um, under handouts, there's an application and then the SLM scorecard. So those are available to download throughout the webinar today. I'm going to mention them again at the end. And if you don't get to them today, we will send them out when this gets loaded onto YouTube as well. But I just want them to be available for you if you want to download them today to take a look at. Okay, so to start with, uh, just a quick agenda. We're going to talk about what Husk uh, Smarter Lunchrooms is. We're going to talk a little bit about the Smarter Lunchroom movement, the benefits of applying to Husk, uh, the different challenge criteria that need to be met, um, how to apply, and then next steps and future trainings that are coming up for this, and share some resources for you as well. So to start with, a little bit what, about what Husk Smarter Lunchrooms is, is it stands for the Healthier U.S. School, School Challenge, Smarter Lunchrooms. And what it is, is it's a volunteer re recognition award um, that recognizes schools that go above and beyond the federal requirements within the entire school nutrition environment. And there are four different award levels. There's a bronze, a silver, a gold, and then also a gold award of distinction. And once you um, attain one of these award levels, you maintain it for four years. However, you do have the option to apply for a, high, a higher level after one year. Okay, so in Nevada, there is only one Husk school so far, and that's Trainer Middle School in Washoe County School District. There, um, they have a silver award right now. And just based on everything I've seen in Nevada as far as school wellness goes and talking to different districts, I know there are more eligible schools out there. Okay, so we really want to try and get uh, some other schools involved in this and get people applying. In the United States, there are over 3,800 Husk certified schools, and that number was as of a couple years ago. Um, I know uh, Michelle Obama really made a push to get more schools certified for this while she is in office. Um, so there are plenty of other schools that are out there. For, for us, um, we're focusing on Husk as a part of our team nutrition grant that we received. So this is a three-year grant, um, and just one of our focus, focus while we have this um, and afterwards as well is getting more schools in Nevada certified for Husk. Um, we're going to be providing technical assistance and instructions on how to apply and help you guys with this um, application process. And going along um, with our grant goals, we're also trying to increase the number of schools that are utilizing the Smarter Lunch or Movement strategies. And we're going to have uh, um, three regional trainings on the Smarter Lunch Rooms Movement this coming February and March in Reno, Elko, and Las Vegas. 
and we're really close to having a trainer lined up for these trainings and it looks like it's most likely going to be a trainer for from Cornell um, from their Center for Behavioral Economics in, in Child Nutrition Programs and they're the center that really started the Smarter Lunchrooms movement so it'd be really awesome um, and a great opportunity if we actually have somebody from there come and speak. So it will be a different trainer than the one that we had this summer if you attended the Smarter Lunchrooms trainings at our um, NSNA conference. Okay, uh, just to start talking a little bit about the Smarter Lunchroom movement, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's a, a movement that started at Cornell, and a Smarter Lunchroom is one that nudges, nudges kids towards nutritious foods. Uh, the core values of Smarter Lunchrooms are that it's low and no cost solutions, it's a lunchroom environment focus, the promotion of healthful eating behaviors, and sustainability. The six Smarter Lunchroom principles aim to manage portion sizes, increase convenience, improve visibility, enhance taste expectations, use suggestive selling techniques, and set smart pricing strategies. Just a little bit about how it works and the evidence. So the Smarter Lunchroom principles and practices are easy to implement. Schools can design their lunchrooms to nudge students towards nutritious foods and some simple with some simple changes. For example, a school has a goal to increase the number of students who choose to eat vegetables with their lunch. By using the Smarter Lunchrooms approach, the school would encourage students to come up with creative names for the vegetable dishes and display that name along with the vegetable in the cafeteria. In Cornell studies, the simple activity combined with displaying the name with the food increased selection of vegetable up to 70%. And here's just a few more of their findings from the different studies they've done with the Smarter Lunchroom techniques. So by moving and highlighting fruit, um, that increased sales of fruit by up to 102 percent. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, with the naming vegetables and displaying the new names with those foods, um, that increased vegetables from between 40 to 70 percent. Introducing a healthy choices only convenience line increased the sale of healthy items by 35 percent. And then something as simple as placing the chocolate milk behind the white milk and making it harder for the kids to get to increased white milk sales by 46%. So these are some very simple, easy changes that can be done. And this um, evidence does show that it works. Um, so that's why I want to bring more Smart Lunchrooms train, training to Nevada because um, it does prove to be very beneficial and useful. So to talk a little bit about the benefits of being a HUS certified school, there are financial incentives involved. If you get the gold award of distinction, that's $2,000. It's $1,500 for the gold award, $1,000 for the silver, and then $500 for the bronze. And this is money that has to go into your nonprofit school food service account and be used for those type of purchases only. I mean, you do get local, state, and national recognition as a part of this. They send you a, di a display banner to put in that school's um, school site, uh, the cafeteria, or wherever they'd like to, to put it. Um, you do get recognition on the team nutrition website, and it really does increase support and momentum around school wellness initiatives. And as you guys probably know, uh, each year you have to set three goals uh, for school wellness and submit that to us in the spring. And I think having the goal of having one HUS certified school or getting one school certified or multiple if you wish uh, is a great idea for one of your goals for, for next year or the next couple of years. I think it's a really good thing that uh, a lot of schools in Nevada can work towards. Okay, so there, are, there is challenge criteria that has to be met as part of this certification. Uh, you have to participate in the National School Lunch and School Breakfast Program. You have to be a team nutrition school. Joining is free and very simple to do. I'm going to show you how to sign up here in the next couple slides. You need to be six cent certified, meet the USDA nutrition standards, and meet the smart snack nutrition standards as well. Uh, the school needs to provide nutrition education, physical education, and opportunities for physical activity. All corrective actions must be completed if you've recently gone through an, an admin review. And they want to um, they want the schools to be showing that they've implemented some smarter lunchroom techniques. 
Um, so this is just a snapshot of criteria. Um, there are more and there's more instructions and explanations in the application itself. So this is a snapshot of the team, the team nutrition school enrollment form. So you do have to sign up um, in order to complete the Husk application, but it is very simple, okay? It's one screen. These are some of the things I asked for, okay? So very easy, simple information to find. Uh, total enrollment, grade level, school type. And then on the next page, um, it's still on the same web page though, um, just you know, school principal, food service manager name, email, somebody that wants to be the team nutrition leader, you know, um, probably the person that's gonna be mainly working on the Husk application or leading that initiative. Okay, so all you do then is submit it, it's free, it's very simple. Okay, um, I have the link for this on our resources page. I just wanted to really let you guys see how easy it is to sign up. And if you are a team nutrition school, you do get a lot of free resources that they have available on their web page as well, which is another bonus for being a team nutrition school. All right, so to talk a little bit about how to meet these different criteria that they outlined for this Husk application, a good first step is to form a school challenge team. This can include and should include people such as the principals, teachers that are interested, students if they want to get involved are a very good resource as well, a wellness champion if you have one, school nurses, uh, involved parents and involved community members, and the food service manager. Okay, so if you have a team like this, it's a lot easier to gather all the information that you're going to need as a part of the application process, and um, it's just good to have insight from these different areas as well. So you can also work with us uh, to receive technical assistance in meeting the criteria and completing the application. I'm available for help as well as we have hired a grants manager to help with our team nutrition grant and she's going to be available and really focused on working with Husk and the smarter lunchrooms as well. So you have at least two of us to, to come to with questions. And then you can also seek resources and additional training through organizations such as the Institute of Child Nutrition and Actions for Healthy Kids. I provided the uh, a resource from Actions for Healthy Kids today. Um, they have a lot of great stuff focused on HUSK criteria and the application process that sh you should find very helpful. Okay, moving on to applying for HUSK. Um, it might seem the application process um, can be done. You know, there's a lot of different schools throughout the United States who have done it. So the first thing to do for this is to complete and submit a self, a Smarter Lunchroom self-assessment scorecard, which I'm going to show you in a moment. This is a two-page handout, and it basically just has you walk through this checklist and check off things that you're already meeting at these schools. If you came to our training for Smarter Lunchrooms in June for the NSNA conference, uh, we had participants do this. And we're going to have participants do this who are going to attend the Smart Lunchrooms trainings in February and March this year. Okay, so if you're planning on attending those trainings, this is a good thing um, to go ahead and do right now, or you can wait. Um, but if you're going to attend those trainings, you'll have done this part already. Next up, you want to review the HUSC ch checklist for the award level in which you're applying. So there's those four different awards, so going through that and getting a good idea of which level you want to apply for is a good starting point. You want to gather all your supporting documentation that you'll need. And then some of the supporting documentation that they'll ask for includes your wellness policy, your team nutrition registration verification, a two full week cycle menu for reimbursable breakfasts and lunches, um, lunch six cent certification worksheets for the two week period, production records for two weeks, uh, which is not required for the bronze level, uh, meal documentation such as some CN labels, nutrition facts, and competitive food documentation if applicable. So there are different pieces that you do have to um, provide supporting documentation. And then if, you, if your school or any schools in your district have been recipients of the Alliance for a Healthier Generation Healthy Schools Program National Recognition Award, uh, they may be eligible for a streamlined application process. Okay, so check and see if any of your schools have that award, and then we can see um, where you can go from there. And I'm providing the link to, 
for how to check that at the, on the resources page. And then this is the link on here to access the application as well. Okay, so here's just a little snapshot of the Smarter Lunchroom self-assessment scorecard. Uh, you may have seen it before. Uh, it's front and back, but it is very simple to hand out. And this is one of the handouts that we've included on the webinar today if you want to download it. And we will send it out uh, as well afterwards. Okay, and some tips for applying. Uh, you want to pull together your team. That school challenge team we talked about, that's um, a team that you should use to do this application. Um, if you divide it up and each person works on a certain part, that will make it a lot easier to get through. And you want to review the application and know any questions that you might have about it to start with. And then you do want to review the district school wellness policy and list ways schools are implementing the policy. And you can include multiple schools on one application uh, for a district if certain criteria are met. So they have to have the same menu and the same foods being served. If there are multiple age grade groups, you can submit a lunch certification worksheet for each age grade group. So that, that is acceptable. Um, they have to have the same nutrition education, physical education, and physical activities being offered or provided at those schools. The same competitive foods and beverages must be sold, and each school must follow the district school wellness policy, which that one's simple in Nevada since uh, we have, each district has their own, and it's not school by school. Okay, some more tips for applying. We really want to make this process easy for you guys, so we're trying to provide as many tips as possible. Um, one thing you can do is filter through the schools in your district that already meet um, or have unchangeable criteria. Okay, so there are some criteria that's going to be harder to change. Um, so you don't really want to focus on those schools so much since it'll be hard for them to, to meet the challenge criteria to be a HUS school. So things you want to look at are at the average daily participation percentage um, because certain schools have to meet a certain percentage to be eligible for one of these awards. And I have the next slide shows you what those percentages are. And then also look at schools that have physical education teachers already. If the school has that, uh, that's a good school to kind of focus on for this application process. And then you can look at schools that have gaps. So if you do have schools that are missing some of the criteria, figure out what those gaps are. And there's some great resources to help you try and fill those gaps and close them so you can apply. One of them is the Action for Healthy Kids Game On, the Ultimate Wellness Challenge. Uh, that's the link for that. They have a lot of good ideas and tips on, on how to close those gaps and things to implement at those schools. That'll help meet those challenge criteria. And like I mentioned before, recruit colleagues to help complete the application. Uh, Divide and Conquer is an awesome technique, you know, so you can kind of share the workload for the application process. And then last, don't be afraid to ask us questions. We are here to help and provide technical assistance. And like I said, uh, myself can help, and then our new grants manager uh, will be here to help as well. So here's a snapshot of the average daily participation percentages that are required uh, for the HUS certification. Um, for the bronze level, at, for breakfast and lunch at any school level, there's no criteria. So you can at least apply for the bronze level if that's something you're worried about. And then it outlines the percentages needed for the silver, gold, and gold award of distinction. So if you go through the schools in your in your district and you see ones that meet certain those certain levels, um, you kind of you can try and aim to meet those um, award levels if you'd like. All right, so going forward and next, step, next steps from here. First thing is take a look at the application so you get a good idea of what's expected, what it's asking for, uh, that type of thing. Um, like I said, that's one of the handouts today, um, and I'm going to provide you the link for that as well. Fill out one of the Smarter Lunchroom self-assessment scorecards. If you've never done that before, um, it shouldn't take you too long, or at least take a look at it and see what it's asking. And like I mentioned, that filling out that scorecard will be a part of those Smarter Lunchroom trainings if you do plan on attending those, those regional trainings coming up. And like I said, they're going to be in February and March. 
once we talk to the potential trainer, we will be able to outline those dates and we'll release those as soon as we can because we really want to increase uh, the attendance for these. And then in addition, at the end of April and early May, we're going to have some school wellness policy implementation tra regional trainings as well um, in the same three areas. And we have picked a trainer for that. They're called the Core Purpose Consulting Group. And they're a group of principals, administrators uh, from different school levels in Arizona. They've been big school wellness champions at their schools. They've done a really great job getting school wellness implemented there and at their sites. So they've put together this team to do some trainings and help spread their knowledge. And one thing they will be covering and talking a little bit about is HUSK. So that will that topic will keep coming up in the different trainings we're, we're offering. And then if you are interested and have schools that you have in mind that you want to apply for for this HUSK certification, please let us know so we can help you guys out as much as we possibly can. Okay, so here's a list of resources I've talked about and mentioned today. The first link on here is the link to the application itself. And then the second one is a link to the self-assessment scorecard for the Smarter Lunchrooms movement. And then the third one is a link to a USDA page that has a different uh, links on there and resources for you for training and technical assistance in filling out the application and answering any questions you might have. And then there's the Team Nutrition link, which is where you can go to join and become a Team Nutrition School, which I showed you guys earlier. is a very simple one-page form. And then there's the link on here for the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. And if you're not sure if your district has any schools that are um, have that Alliance for a Healthier Generation Recognition Award, this is where you can go to check. Uh, you might have to sign up as an administrator or see who your administrator is, but you should be able to check that on this, on this web page. And then the last one on here is from Action for Healthy Kids, and it's a sample application. So this is a really great resource. It gives you tips on how to apply, and it walks you through the whole application and shows you specifically where you're going to need supporting documentation, where you can get that. It has really good tips and it simplifies the application for you. So that's a very good thing to look at um, if you guys have a chance. This is just a snapshot of the application so you kind of know what you're looking for when you open it. That's, that's the cover page of it. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't already and you want to download these handouts, they're available um, throughout the webinar. You just go to the, the tab on the side where um, you know, if we have a poll, you want to ask a question, there should be a handouts tab as well. And you just click in that and you can download the applications. Okay. Okay. So that's all I have today. I'm talking about Husk. There is a lot more information and more detailed topics we can talk about as far as Husk goes in Smarter Lunchrooms. But today I really wanted it just to be an overview and to get you guys thinking about it thinking about applying, what schools might be interested, uh, just just to get that idea out there for you guys and not really overwhelm you with um, anything else that has to do with it. So if anybody has any questions, uh, we'll take questions for a few minutes. And just as a reminder, our webinars are always uploaded onto our YouTube channel, and we'll send that link out once it has been uploaded. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for attending the webinar. And if you have any questions, call or email me. And if not, um, have a nice holiday break.